the southwest part of the island of Pompeii, and we're looking at one of the most marvelous pieces of architecture in the Pacific. It's called Nam Madal. And being here, you really get a feel for the scale of the place. I mean, look at the size of those boulders. We're here with a local guide and fellow art historian, Manu. This complex of 92 small islands spans over an area of 170 acres in a lagoon in Pompeii. Some of these walls are 50 feet high and 16 feet thick in some places. And that really goes to show the power of the rulers here, the Saudular dynasty. So Nan Madal was the capital of the Saudular dynasty on Pompeii. It was a religious center, it was a political center, it was a fortress, it was a royal residence, and it was a mortuary. Pompeii is a Pacific island that is in Micronesia. The people who originally settled here were probably the Lapida people around 4,000 years ago. The site of Nan Madal was initially settled on by 700, but major construction began in 1200 after the Saudulars arrived in 1100. It remained active until the 1600s. Right, the Saudulars were actually foreigners who took over the island. The story from the oral tradition of the people here is that the first Saudulars were two brothers who had magic powers, Olosofa and Olosipa. With their magic, they moved the stones of Nan Madal into place to create a wor place of worship for the farm god Nanisan Sapwa. Other stories say that birds or giants move the massive stones into place. Eventually, Olosopa would go on to found the Saddler dynasty. The Saddlers initially were good rulers, but eventually became more oppressive. Which is exemplified by the fact that the Saddlers kept their potential rivals in the city so that, they, so that they could watch over them. You're not going to have any trouble if all of your enemies are locked up. Eventually, the Saddlers were overthrown in 1628 by another foreigner called Iso Kelikel. Without the Sajular, the site lost its importance and was eventually abandoned. So this complex is made up mainly of basalt pillars and prismatic columns stacked on top of each other in a pattern to form the walls. It's called the log cabin technique or the header stretcher technique, and it consists of crisscrossing stones. There's no mortar or concrete to hold them together, and the stones are kept in the, the original gray color that they were found in. No paint was added. Just gravity and placement keeps the structure from falling apart. And the basalt didn't come from that close to here either. That's true. The rocks came from the opposite side of the island at Saki, 25 miles away. They had to use what they had available on the island. These things were heavy too, many tons, and would have had to have been carried by people. That further shows the power of the rulers, because they had to have the ability to organize and order this massive use of human energy. Despite the plan of this place being asymmetrical, it does have organization. Madol Pa, which is in the southwest portion, was a political center. The northwest portion housed a religious center, called Madol Pawe. It's oriented in a way so that the winds come through it nicely. And the site further functioned to allow the elite of the society to distance themselves from the people of lower status. Religious ceremonies were held here and people were buried in the mortuaries. But also, other things happened here too. They built canoes and prepared food on specific islands dedicated to particular functions. They even kept a holy eel that represented a sea god that they fed only the finest of tortoises. Of course, the largest buildings were reserved for people of higher status. The largest buildings called Nandawats that function as a royal burial place. It's in the religious portion of the city and is extremely large, with 25 foot high walls. Nan Madal held 1,000 people. Most of them were chiefs or priests and the rest were peasants. What's interesting about this place is that it's full of canals, and that it's built on the coral of the lagoon. It's almost like Venice. Yeah, these canals really connect to Pacific culture. The sea is a connector between things, a path, and not a barrier. It even looks like a boat in the way the walls tilt upwards at the points of the buildings. And more so, it connects to Pacific culture, and it allowed powerful people in the population to control the worldview of the people. Recently, the site of Namadal has been threatened by mangrove growth and the buildup of debris in the waterways. To provide aid for these problems, UNESCO made it a World Heritage Site in 2016, though it is still classified as endangered by the organization. Now, Nan Madal is similar in many ways to other royal complexes. These similarities are extremely evident with the Forbidden City. The Forbidden City is a palace complex, like Nan Madal, built under the Ming Dynasty in China. Like Nan Madal, it not only was a seat of power, but also was a ritual center. In Nam at all, the ruler ruled over his subjects separate from them and isolated. Not unlike the Forbidden City, where common people were forbidden to enter, and only people with official businesses with the emperor were allowed in. That's right, it separated the elite from the peasantry. And back to the ritual aspect, ceremonies were held in the Forbidden City that confirmed the emperor's status as a high point of society. Rituals were also held in Nam at all, though 
more for the religion of the people of Pon Pai in general and not for the ruler. They both show power too. Nanwadal does this with its size and the material. These special pillars are extremely hard to move and massive. The Forbidden City does this with scale too, but also with perfection in organization and design. Each building, knob, and doorway is symbolic and emphasizes power. They also, serving their function as a place of power for the rulers, acted as a fortress. That's correct. Namadol has high walls and water to prevent attack. That's true for the, for the Forbidden City too. It has moats and high walls. But the water in Namadol has different connection to the culture. It acts as a more of a connected than a barrier. The moat in the Forbidden City is purely a barrier. And there are different materials too. Nanmadol is, a, is basalt because that is what was available while the Forbidden City has many materials, from wood to marble to brick, to further emphasize power. So on a whole, they are similar in that they show power, the ritual and scale, and they separate the ruler from the people, but are different in their material.